it was nothing else. No bird, no butterfly flew. Only a yellowing leaf quivered into the encompassed pond. I saw it. Come. Ah, this dewy, soft, breathing grass. How tenderly it cools my feverish toes. Bend a little. Hazelnuts. The large, pillaging, spotted woodpecker may have scattered them here, but they're not yet ripe. No, I am neither peckish nor hungry. Later, we will go beneath the fruit trees and search on the lawn for beautiful red flaming apples or shake the round, juicy, gold, green plums. Yes, will you? Do you still remember all those peacock butterflies? So many of it sucked on the fallen, rotted fruits and swayed. And also a morning cloak fluttered, dark velvet, golden hemmed, pearled blue. Oh, the rose, she perfumes. Yesterday, she still wanted to stay in bud. Now night unlocked her so she could flower the shy blushing one and she seems happy you beloved one in the dream of the bumblebees and bees such untouched floating alabaster cup must glow you ask me if bees and bumblebees dream. Sure, they dream of sweet, foaming bees' milk when they slumber childlike in this cream white lily. But stone bumblebees are the most beautiful, buzzing in warm black and gingery furs. Why do you suddenly look at me strangely and smile? Was I your intoxicating chalice, shimmering pale in midnight? Your milk, your wine, gold brown Malaga, ruby kish. Be quiet. I lay the breathing hand on your lips. Faint, trembling blades of grass, moisture, and a tiny, motionlessly squatting frog formed out of green bronze, and a damselfly, steel blue with glassy wings, murmurs away. I shudder. Willows like bathing women bend their foreheads and ash blonde falling hair towards the pond. Say, does a snail horn bode well for the one who picks it up? If you doubt, I will give it to the waters. How they crinkle, how they billow, silken and still glisten coldness. Beloved, let us still sit here a little on the only open small sunny spot in the reed bed and look across to the windows, our windows, knotted around by clematis and darker ivy. How I like this small castle, hidden away from the world, enclosed in shade. Also the wall decorations, also the blackened gilding, the crumbling cherubs, the weary wreaths of flowers, also, the moss hanging off the cracked Greek vases. 
also by the gate, the mighty lime and its wood pigeon, calling again with darkening cooing, and the elaborately forged lattice. Are you going now? Shall I follow already? Lead me. I shiver. I fear. I would like to swim up to the water lilies, the yellow glow. Look, the fleece of your chest proliferates like algae and I know you are the water sprite. And I know countless riches, sea silver, sludge gold, you hoard deep in hidden chambers under the water, under the earth. Will you take my hands now? Dive with me to the bottom, to the gate guarded by a heavy moustached catfish. Shall I never see sister or brother again, nor the old father anymore whom I love? You. I tremble. If I conceived, my child would have webs between fingers and toes would strangely wear muscles and water lentils in endlessly dripping hair. Back to the bank, mocker. Are you whispering in jest that I must bear you twin boys? Castor and Pollux, because their royal mother's name adorns me. Do we really believe that a god through a swan can approach an earthly woman? The charming fable. I fall silent. I lied. My caressing hands nestle feathers. Feel softer down. And white, quiveringly spread wings. Beat over me. <laughs>